Hey guys, so today we're doing an exciting video. I'm going to be showing you guys how to install RPI TX, turn a Raspberry Pi into a radio transmitter. It allows you to simply add a wire to one of the GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi and that wire becomes a transmitter. And for today, I was finishing up the supporter image for those who are interested and I was going to add RPI TX to it. But I figured for everyone who's watching, if you have a Raspberry Pi, you can follow along and install it on your Raspberry Pi. First, we're going to take a quick look at what RPI TX is using my other example video showing testing the transmitting. So you can transmit data, you can transmit voice, and there is a great uh, Google Groups for this where you can really learn a lot. So I'll, I'll leave links to that as well. Let's go ahead and watch a clip of it in action and then we'll get to installing it. So as you can see it goes between 50 kilohertz and 1 gigahertz. So the range is, is amazing and it's a really well refined app. So if you have an interest in radio I want to give a shout out to one of the member coffee supporters Tammy. I know she was interested in radio so I wanted to make sure to get to some radio videos. We're going to do more RPI TX videos and actually go through some of the process of transmitting our own voice files in later videos. Today is just the installation. I want to make sure everyone has it available before we get into anything more. We're going to go through a test here. And I'm picking it up on my built-in SDR on my Pine64 Pine tab in this example. Now we can hear it Okay, so that's what RPITX is. It's an awesome program. I think everyone should check it out if they do have a Raspberry Pi. And we're going to go ahead and go through the install process. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the GitHub for it. And once you do that, you can then read how to install it here. And I'm going to go through the process for you as I'm installing it on the uh, privacy box supporter image. If you have an interest in that and you want to support this work and get something back in return that's really unique, go ahead and check out the README on the Gitia Onion. Talks about everything that it includes, including your own generated Tor Hidden Service Next Cloud. The Onion address doesn't generate and the private key doesn't generate until you first log in. Private bin button. So it not only has private bin as a Tor Hidden Service as well as the Tor Hidden Service Next Cloud and a Torified Wi Fi router, which allows you to turn it on and off with the new box menu system I built. So if you do box shell, you get a nice little menu here where you can go through some of that. That's what that is if you're curious. Let's go ahead and get started with the installation so anyone with a Raspberry Pi can follow along here. We'll go ahead and follow the directions as shown here. First thing we're going to want to make sure is we have everything updated and we're installing Git if it's not already installed on our Raspberry Pi. While it goes through that, let's go ahead and get a little head start here. So before you go through the process, it's a good idea to go and read over what you're going to be doing. So we'll go ahead as a regular user and we're going to do Git clone and then this repository here. So we'll go ahead and open that, go ahead and switch user to a regular user, and then we'll go into our home directory. We will go ahead and clone it. It's going to download all the source code here. And once we do that, as it says here, CD RPITX. And at this point, we can do dot slash install dot sh. 
and it's going to need our password here in order to install some of the prerequisite packages. So while it's going through that, let's go ahead and look at RPI TX. And go ahead and take a look at a picture of it so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. And what we're going to use and what I've used in the examples is a simple wire on a GPIO pin. Now as you can see, other people have gone through and actually created better quality antennas for this. It still works very well with a simple wire, of course, because essentially that's what an antenna is. And as you can see in this picture here, you simply attach it to the correct GPIO pin and it turns that into a nice little radio transmitter. Disclaimer, you should have your ham license if you're going to experiment on bands that you don't have permission. How you should add a filter, you know, it's a warning. You want to make sure that, you know, you're following all FCC guidelines so you don't get in any kind of trouble. Talks about the different Raspberry Pi models that it works for right here. It actually works on the Pi Zero as well. And it does work on the Pi 4, which is what we're installing it on right here. And you simply place a wire on GPIO 4, which is the pin number 7 on your GPIO header. This will act as your antenna. And it actually is a one of the coolest Raspberry Pi programs I think that is out there. And some of these are some examples of receiving some of that transmission. Different types of tests are included with a easy test menu. You can even paint pictures in the spectrum. So that's something a lot of people don't realize that there is so much capability with radio. Uh, you can actually uh, take a photo of yourself and actually paint yourself right on the spectrum so very interesting stuff as you can see this example here all these different modulations that are included and we're gonna go into more of this I went over a test just introducing the application in the past today we are installing it and then we will end up continuing this first there looks like there's an error here so of course we're gonna to want to make sure that we have the prerequisites and then I'm going to go through and hit the install process again. The good thing about this is the way it's set up is if you're missing com commands that it requires for C++, this G++ compiler command, we can still rerun that install. So we'll go ahead and we will check on that. It's just a reminder, make sure you have everything that it requires. And we're going to go ahead and install the G++, C++ compiler, and the make utilities that we need for this process. And we're going to go ahead and run the install, which is an automated install script that's going to install everything for us. And at that point, once we finish the full installation, running the install.sh, we can then reboot our system and RPITX will be ready. Of course, you're going to want to slip on that GPIO pin antenna or simple wire. And at that point, you can go ahead and try it out. When you install things like this, you're always going to look out for any errors because there isn't always a system in place that checks for those errors. So if you see the errors, now, you'll see warnings from time to time. That's not something to worry about so much. It's the errors you're going to want to look out for. If you ever are compiling a program on Linux and you see errors, you're going to want to look out and double check those. Go ahead and copy that error. Paste it into Google or Woogle or DuckDuckGo, whatever you prefer, and search for the error. Make sure it's not something that you need for that system. I try to make these tutorials easy to follow along with beginners, so I try to cover some information that maybe some people already know, but hopefully it helps somebody who's newer to Linux. Now, it looks like we've successfully installed RPITX without error. 
This is a great program. Highly suggested if you have any interest in radio, get yourself a software-defined radio for receiving and test it out. You'll have a lot of fun, and we're going to continue on tutorials related to radio coming up. Of course, we're going to go back to Laura as well when we get a chance. But at the moment, I really want to cover this because it was something I have planned, and I just installed it on the newest supporter image. So at this point, we've finished our installation. All we have to do now is reboot it. And at that point, you can even follow along my example video if you want to test it out with a GPIO pin where I demonstrate that process. And, and then, of course, make sure to subscribe, share this video, and be subscribed with the bell icon so that way you're here when we go through more of the process of transmitting our own audio. That's it for today. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to support work like this, go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech and you can find various options there as well as read the public blog and all of the written and video tutorials are organized there by Mirror. So you can check that out and see what we've been up to. And I will be back later with more on Linux.